Our big stat is brought to you by Walgreens. There is no team in the nation that has won more volleyball national championships than Penn State, seven all-time, two ahead of conference rival Nebraska. Nittany Lions' last national championship came in 2014, and they won one in 1999. And our big interview as a key member of that team, and great to have her with us as we are joined by the head coach of the Nittany Lions, Katie schumacher Colley. Uh, coach, great to have you. Uh, when, when you think about those national championships, what pops into your mind? I, I mean, just how fortunate I am to be a part of this program. And, you know, I always think of the great times we had with my teammates. And, you know, when we won, it was in Hawaii. And I don't think you could have asked for a better trip. So, um, no, I'm just really special friendships and um, time of my life. Yeah, you're floating around and you're in paradise. So that's a, that's a pretty good combination. Let's talk about yeah. this year's team. You guys are 4-0 in the Big Ten. What have you been most pleased with in terms of this conference start? You know, I, I think just that the fact that we're getting better and better every week, that's been our goal, and we're working really hard. And, um, you know, it's hard to win in this conference. It's hard to win, period. And I'm, I'm happy for the team and for their growth so far. And that we're going to continue to do everything we can to prepare this group. Well, you talk about preparing this group, and it was interesting to look through your non-conference schedule. And I know you're not alone in this. A lot of Big Ten teams schedule really tough non-conference opponents as well. And I guess I'm just always interested in the balancing act. Because here you are in this conference, which is far and away the best volleyball conference in the country. You know you're going to get matches that will really challenge you. Frankly, you know you're going to lose some matches along the way because that's just how good this league is. So how do you decide like how many challenging non-conference matchups to have versus how many you need just to build some confidence to get some W's? Right. Well, we knew we were going to have a new group in, and you know I think it was important for us to challenge them early uh, so that we were prepared for conference. So, yes, it was a humbling experience to lose some matches in preseason. And, you know, I'm proud of the way that we bounced back. And, yeah, this, this conference is relentless. And we have to be ready to go and, and focused every night. And, you know, we want to be the most prepared team. Well, the teams you have to be prepared for this weekend include Ohio State. And that's going to be a really interesting situation for Mac Pedraza. She was, of course, a really great player for four years at Ohio State. Now she goes against her former team. It is unusual, but it is not unique. I mean, there is some of this now in this day and age of college athletics. What are you going to say to her in advance of that about facing some of her former teammates? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have to say a whole lot to Mac. I think she will be prepared and she's excited. Uh, She gets excited for every match and she prepares herself really well. Um, you know, I, I'm proud of what she's done here, and I'm proud of what she did before she came to Penn State. And, you know, not only as a player, but she graduated from there. She got a master's degree from there. And, you know, here she is getting a certificate at Penn State and just having a different experience. So I'm um, looking forward to both matches this weekend. And, you know, I, I know Mac will be ready. Yeah, you do have some good ones coming up this weekend. It's also alumni weekend which to me has got to be really interesting for you. I mean, you are someone who's so deeply connected to this program. We talked about the 1999 National Championship. You've been an assistant coach there for quite a while before leaving and and becoming a head coach elsewhere and then coming back and, and serving as an assistant. So kind of take me through what it's like for you as an alum, as someone who loves Penn State and who played there and is so connected to those players, but also now as the ambassador of the program, as the head coach and the person who is welcoming some of your former teammates back to the fold. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still surreal for me every day, you know, being at Rec Hall and um, having a bunch of my teammates back, players that came before me and after me. It's, uh, it's a really special place, and I, I'm so excited to see some of my teammates and some of the younger ones that – obviously set some big records here and you know to have Megan back on staff has been amazing and you know I think she'll be just as excited and welcoming back some of her teammates but um, yeah I'm I'm happy I'm excited it'll be a great weekend and we need to play some good volleyball we talked about this right when you took over but kind of in the same vein 
succeeding Russ Rose. I mean, here is someone who was your coach, who was your mentor, who obviously casts an enormous shadow. Those are huge shoes to fill because of how great Penn State was under his tutelage. What has that been like for you now that you're a couple of years into this, into being the head coach of Penn State? Well, I mean, there, there's no one like him, and I'm never going to replace what he did. You know, my goal is to continue his legacy and to, you know, honor him and my teammates and everyone that came through the doors at Penn State. Um, so I, I'm lucky he's still around and gives me input all the time, and um, he always has great advice for me. The standard is so high at this program, and obviously a huge part of the reason why is – Russ Rose, but it's the only program ever to make every single NCAA tournament, which to me just boggles the mind. We mentioned it has been a while since Penn State has won a national championship, haven't been to a Final Four since 2017. You're certainly knocking on the door. What's the missing piece, do you think, to get back to that level? Well, I'm just glad I didn't screw it up last year getting into the tournament. That's the, the first thing. Um, you know, I think it's just to continue to recruit how yeah. we can and to get the players that are here better and better every day. And, um, yeah, I mean, this team wants to win. They're competitive, and they know that it's, it's a daily task, and it's not just Friday, Saturday. It's what they're doing every day throughout the week. And, you know, in practice, I you know, our, our second side is at times – just as good if not better than the first side and that's what you want to see in practice so i'm proud of all of them and for what they've been doing and um we still got a lot of season ahead of us i always like to get into the background of of the coaches and the players that we talk to and yours is really interesting you are a chicagoan you have really deep big 10 ties in your family your dad played football at michigan your brother was a really good player at the university of illinois i know know your dad has passed away but what were the Big Ten rivalry discussions like in your household between the Illini and the Wolverines and the Nittany Lions? Oh, friendly wagers all the time. <laughs> but no, it was, um, you know, growing up in Chicago, it's, it's, it's Big Ten or nothing. Yep. And I, I was just really fortunate to be exposed to different schools. And, you know, between my dad and my brother, everyone, you know, had a great career and really loved where they went to school. And... Um, I know that they're always cheering for me now, so that's all that matters. Now, you have something to explain here because you are a South Sider, but you are a Cubs fan. How did that yes, happen? Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. Well, all right. I, have, uh, I had an uncle, Frank Maloney, who used to work for the Cubs. He was the ticket manager for about 30 years there. All right. So as, as a kid growing up, we were always uh, going up to Cubs games and hanging out. And, um, yeah, it was a real special time. And, my life and you know with my cousins and my brothers and sisters so yeah we were real lucky all right that's fair enough i will give you a pass on that i'm a north side white Sox fan and it's connected to my family as well but but i always well, expect... I, still, I still like the socks i still like them i'm, oh, I'm a you chicago can't fan like now. both of them you can't <laughs> like both of them come on yeah all right well i don't like the cubs i'm just going to come right out and say it so i i appreciate your willingness to to straddle both sides of that fence. Uh, you're, you were a fabulous high school athlete. I mean, not just oh, a great thanks. volleyball player, but also an incredible basketball player. You were inducted a number of years ago into the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. And I was looking at the induction list when you were put in that Hall of Fame. Gail Sayers, Dick Butkus, Andre Dawson. <laughs> what was that like to be around all of those Chicago legends? Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. I, I you know, <laughs> I, I grew up in a great neighborhood and I grew up with a ton of great athletes. And, you know, from grade school to high school, I played with some of the best athletes around and it's really fortunate to be on some really successful teams. So, I mean, without that and going to Mother Macaulay, I don't know if, you know, I would have been noticed. But, you know, I, I'm lucky and not real sure if I belong on that list, but uh, I'll take it. It was a real special night for myself and my family. You have three daughters. How aware are they of what a great athlete you were? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I think they're they're more, uh, let's say, obsessed with the Penn State girls and want to know everything <laughs> about them and what they're doing. So, um, you know, I, I think they know we had a good high school team, and, you know, that that's really about it. I think they're all Penn State, and 
they're really into it. They come to all the matches and they know who, who who's who on the other team. So right. um, I'm lucky. I, I'm lucky they love it. And I'm lucky that I have a great husband that takes care of them. Yeah. What's the balancing act there of motherhood and coaching? Yeah, it, it's tough. But, you know, I have really great people around me that support me in this career. And, you know, from the time that we lived in Chicago with my family being there to coming back to Penn State, you know, it's a special place and a lot of people want to help and uh, I'm real lucky. All right, Katie, I want to leave you with just a, a quick look ahead to the weekend. You've got Indiana, which is really improving. You've got Ohio State, which is nationally ranked. Give us a quick thumbnail on each of those teams and what you're going to need to do to stay unbeaten in conference play. Yeah, you know, I think both teams are playing well. Um, you know, I went to college with Steve Aird, the head coach at IU, and I think he's done an exceptional job there, and they compete hard. Um, so, like I said, every match for us is going to be tough, and we have to be prepared. And, um, you know, I, IU and Ohio State, I, whatever their records are, it doesn't matter. And for us, it's we have to play well at home, and um, you got to win at home. So that, that's, that's our goal. Katie schumacher Colley. Always fun to visit with you. Thanks so much for taking the time. Best of luck this weekend. And, and again, really a, a pleasure as always. Thanks. Great to see you.